It's a wonderful day, it's a wonderful day for a ride on the train. April 2011, and Wales' latest railway is almost complete. 25 miles of a narrow-gauge track running through the stunning scenery of Snowdonia. It's got to be one of the great mountain railways of the world, and it certainly will be when it's finished. I like building railways, full stop. Well, I'm looking forward very, very much to it. It'll be one of the nicest runs in Europe, I'm sure. Supported by royalty and donations from around the world, the Welsh Highland Railway has taken 15 years to build and cost almost £30 million. Pounds. But it hasn't been an easy ride. Many have objected to what they see as the defiling of a quiet valley in the National Park. The railway's here and we can't do anything about it. We've just got to work around the railway. It won't succeed. The one before it didn't. It's just toys for rich men. But for the volunteers who do it for the love of steam, it's a dream come true. This is not an enthusiast railway. This is a railway. For the past ten years, the Welsh Highland Railway has been managed by an unflappable Leicestershire man. But as the day of the opening ceremony draws closer, even he can't contain his excitement. I'd better go. Ever so sorry. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. I'm Paul Lewin, and uh, I'm the general manager of the Festini Ogham Welsh Island Railways, and uh, I'm just on my way to work this morning. I live in the railway station at, uh, at Minforth, and I drive two miles into Port Maddock, uh, following the route of the, the railway as I, as I go. It's particularly nice going down here because there's a wonderful view out uh, across to Port Maddock and uh, across the Cobb. Before I came to the Festinial Railway, I was actually working for a company on a global IT project uh, based in Switzerland. So it was a big project management job. But at the same time as that, my hobby, of course, has always been working with railways. Um, so this job gave me the opportunity to bring together the hobby and the, uh, and the, the professional um, career in, in one place. Every morning when I wake, dear Lord, a little prayer I make. Well, please to keep thy lovely eye on all poor creatures born to die. Another enthusiast whose life has been profoundly affected by the railway is Paul Hoskins, or Tom Jones, as he's known to his fellow volunteers. Paul has been giving up his weekends to work on the Welsh Highland for 15 years, whatever the weather. Well, I try to come up here every other weekend, but it doesn't always work out like that. I usually come this way. Even if I got plenty of time, I'd normally come up around here. Paul Hoskins is a founder member of the Volunteer Works Party known to everyone as the Black Hand Gang. Pussycat, pussycat, I love you. Yes, I do. I think there's only out of the original gang, which I'd like to include myself in it, obviously, I think there may be about six or seven of us left. I've been coming up here from Llechley, 129 miles, and I don't get anything from, from them. <laughs> I wouldn't mind something towards expenses from the hierarchy, shall I say, but I, <laughs> I'll be in a box a long time before that happens. Uh, it's just a good crack. This is the Black Hand Gang, which are the local team. It's really a lot of enthusiasts involved with the whole thing, you know, and it's great to see such teamwork. When we have visitors, you know, we, we usually bring them for a ride on the train, and it does feel special because you've been involved with it, you know, so, yeah, it is great. I'm a good gopher <laughs> and setting things up for them, but, you know, obviously I'm not an engineer and I wouldn't like to fiddle about with the tracks myself, you know. But, you know, there's lots of other things that you can do. The Black Hand Gang were not the only ones who helped to rebuild the railway. Another group, the rest of the World Gang, have spent alternate weekends laying track. The old line ran between Dinas, through Weinvaur, Rhydi, Bedgelert, Namor, Pont Croesor and Porth Madog, and was originally built to carry slate. 
Rebuilding the derelict line has been a dream shared by many since work began in 1996. And it's not just the volunteers who are enthusiastic about this huge project finally reaching its conclusion. How do you measure enthusiasm? <laughs> I was very enthusiastic, should we say that? I was very enthusiastic indeed, yeah. And uh, I'd led um, projects to overhaul locomotives, I'd been a director of the supporting society, and I'd spent an inordinate amount of cash getting here um, so that I could spend weekends working on the trains. My father and his father before him liked to spend their spare time building fairly large-scale model steam locomotives. So even when I was a kid, there were always steam engines around the garden. Um, I got the job of driving them and running them in. So, you know, I've been driving loco since I was about five years old. And for many volunteers, driving or being carried by a steam or diesel train is a huge part of working on a narrow-gauge railway. But you know, I could still be in bed with a gorgeous bomb, though. Look what I am. Oh. We're heading down to Corlan which is just on the other side of the Brinnevelin Road Bridge. Today, the works party head off from Friedti, which at 650 feet above sea level is the highest point on the railway. Two teas, one coffee, sir. We have uh, the North Wales gang in the back, with uh, quite a crew of them. Well, Stella's on the plate now. Where's she going? No, she's taking two inches off the door. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to have something to do. You can do only so much of decorating you can do in a house. And then the wife gets fed up of you, so you get thrown out. So that's what I do. Every hour of volunteer labour has enabled the railway to match fund and attract grant money. Thank you, gang. The value of the work done by gangs such as this one has been enormous. We sort of evolved and honed our skills, laying the track down to Carnarvon, and uh, subsequently then going up towards Wine Road and Reedy and now all the way through to Parks, and I think that's our achievement, that over the period of the last 13, 14 years, we've laid this line from Carnarvon through to Parks Mad Dog, 90% of it done by volunteers. I've known David Thomas now for over 40 years. He says had two major operations on his knees, and he has worked hard on his physiotherapy so he can get back to what he loves, which is this. And through his dedication in this thing, David Thomas has become the chairman, or as we know him, OGO, O-G-O, or Great One. And uh, OGO's in charge. Those are having a their tea break, and have their tea break. We're going to have the rest of the camp get these tools off. The generator we normally use has been stolen by naughty boys when I was starting dinners. So we have to use the old one and its output isn't very good. It takes a month to boil a kettle of water. And all these guys here are complaining that their tea's not ready for dinner, so I'm going to be in a bad box yet again. But never mind. I don't know why I come here, you know. So... I love trains. I have done since I was knee-high to a grasshopper. My father was a quarryman in Bethesda, and he used to come home on the Penrint Railway, and we used to put Blanche and Linda to bed in the sheds and then I would go home on the back my father's moped back to where, where we lived and I think uh, some of that steam got stuck in my blood and it's still there now. Working on the railway has become a central part of all their lives but for David it's been a lifesaver. Until two and a half years ago I was the director of the theatre going there in Bangor. Uh, unfortunately the theatre was closed and uh, I was made redundant. You felt bitter towards the end, you know, and and to me personally, it, it it was a I I did try for other jobs, but at the time I was sixty years of age, you know, who wants to take on a a, a sixty year old person that's worked in the theatre for over thirty years? I'll go, I'll have to walk out to the way. You can take this one, yeah. Being involved with the railway was a great help to me. I was able to sort of throw myself into projects there, and it took my mind off it, and it was something, an alternative way of filling my day, if you like. For Paul Hoskins also, the railway has been a source of strength through difficult times of his own. I, uh, it was confirmed back in November 2009 I had prostate cancer and then I started having radiotherapy for it. 
actually I fared very well. I mean, I didn't feel tired or anything. I was able to do lots of things after. It's sort of a, a funny thing, cancer. I'm not saying it will ever come back to wood. I, I hope it never will. It, you know, it did scare me, but the family, oh, I say it scared them quite a bit. But me, I was stuck between a rock and a hard place. I, I just had to carry on. Paul has been a lucky man to realise his dream. But due to work commitments in Llanelli, he was unable to be at Carnarvon on a truly historic day. A day organised to thank the volunteers and supporters who have given so generously of their time and money. The chance to be the first ever passengers on the completely restored track. Yet another momentous day for the Welsh Island Railway, but this one is a bit special, isn't it? Going all the way to Port Maddock um, on a Welsh Island train from Carnarvon. And uh, when you look back at the beginning of the project, there was the poster that had a picture of a train in the Aberglaslyn Pass hauled by a red Bayer Garrett steam engine. And guess what? We're on a train hauled by a red Bayer Garrett steam engine that's going to take us all the way to Port Maddox. So, yeah, very special day. We live in Nottinghamshire, in a little village, close to the Derbyshire border. And we've come here today because we're sponsors of the West Highland Railway. And this, as we're sponsors, we're able to come on this first trip, which is rather exciting, really. I've been a supporter since I was in school, really. And it was one of my favourite lost causes, to, was to walk the track uh, down the Glassling Gorge and through the tunnels and through the Nantmore Tunnel and try and visualise the trains there. Um, without ever actually dreaming that it would ever happen. I've been volunteering with the Black Hand Gang and the contributing there. Tony Williams striving. The top of Speedy Gonzalez, but uh, all he was a speed cop, wasn't he? <laughs> All the people you see around us here have all been involved in some way or other. Whether they've come along and wielded a shovel or sent a check, it's all helped to, to get where we are today. Achievement. You know, it's been done. When those trains rolled into Port Maddock and those people came out waving flags and cheering. Well, I never seen anything like it in your life. Ten years ago, we don't want trains in our streets. We don't want these dirty things going through our countryside. But where did all them local people come from? A truly remarkable sight to see a huge steam train running along and across the high street in Perth Madog for the first time in decades. But well, you never thought for one moment that all those people in Port Madog could be there just to say, well, thank you in a way. Well, it brought a lump to my throat, it brought a tear to my eye, I think. For Tony Williams, who drove the first ever Bayer Garrett loco on the railway in Wales, it's a proud moment. I'm a very lucky man, and if I don't have to drive again, it'll be sad, but there we are, I've achieved something. Personally, it's very much a dream come true, because there was, there was a time uh, here last Christmas when I didn't think I'd ever see it done. So today it's been very special, and I, I am... I am very lucky. Rebuilding the line has meant that old stretches of derelict track that had been absorbed into fields and farms have been dug out and opened up again, altering not just the countryside, but a way of life. This is called Clough Farm, and this is where my husband and his father is farming. We've got two young daughters, um, and as you can see, the railway is cutting through the farm uh, three times. The railway really, you know, um, it can affect the farm on a daily basis, to be honest with you. If my husband is gathering the mountain, it can be very difficult bringing the sheep down to the bottom fields here. Before the railway, there was only two of them gathering, but at the moment, because we've got open crossing here, it takes about four or five people to bring them down, so that can be very difficult. The girls, they're seven and five. 
it's an adventure for them, isn't it? You know, that the train is passing Nine and Tide's house and every time they see the train, they come out, they wave, and the people on the train, they wave back. So um, it's nice for them. But as I say, at the end of the day, we can't do anything about it. We've just got to work together and hope for the best. Welcome to Santa HQ. <laughs> it's very cold outside. <laughs> you see that from your goose pimples, Murphy? Yeah. yeah. Rare into go. Rare into go. Let's get elfing. <laughs> Remembering elf and safety, of course. Take that man out and shoot him. The Black Hand Gang are a versatile lot and don't just work on the track bed. For the actors and exhibitionists amongst them, Christmas is an opportunity to get into the festive spirit. My name's Tony Murphy and I do it for the fun of it. And to see the sparkle in those little eyes is wonderful. This is our 10th anniversary this year, so 10 years have gone quick, I tell you. It's an hour and a half round trip, which is just... Right. You know, if it was any longer, the little ones would get fed up, I think. Oh, it's going very well. Speak uh... for yourself, fatty. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's a miserable elf, that one, isn't he? We've got seven minutes per coach. Sometimes we have to slow the engine down. If we're not on the second coach by dinner, we're in trouble. Hey, Santa! Good night, Thomas. Good night, Thomas. Hey. And what do you want from Santa for Christmas? Some sausages, Santa. He doesn't want he... sausages. No. Lego. Oh, 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 I love Lego. In deepest winter, trains seldom run between Carnarvon and Perth Madog as conditions are too icy and passengers few and far between. At £10 a head, though, these centre trains are a good source of income for the railway and fun to boot. Brilliant fun. Your own kids are growing up. You lose that little bit of magic at Christmas. I don't... Oh, I think that is happening as well. <laughs> All good, clean fun. I'm having such a good time. I've had a direct hit on my head, so I've been trying to get my own back on him. <laughs> Come and get me if you think you can! I've got to watch what he's doing. <laughs> so we nearly missed the train coming across Anglesey in the snow, but things we got here. And they're really enjoying it. It's wonderful. We've done it once before. Me, the in-laws, my wife and my two kids drove from uh, about four or five hours from RAF Mildenhall. Coming out here just to enjoy, enjoy the snow, the beautiful scenery, and we don't see a lot of landscape like this in California. Best thing ever done all, all the year round, and I can't wait till next Christmas come round again and do it again. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings we bring to you and your king. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Now, Dolly Clower, Merry Christmas, everybody! We love Christmas! Just four months later, and at the Fistinyog Railway headquarters in Porthmadog, last-minute preparations are underway for the formal opening of the Welsh Highland Line. OK, thank you. Um, Pauline? Yes? Could you pop in and... For Paul Lewin, his PA Pauline Holloway, and the 65 full-time staff, this is the culmination of years of hard work. So I used to volunteer here, which is how I started here. And uh, that was fun. I still do some volunteering. If Paul's out on, on the locomotive, or my husband is, then I'll go and clean the locus some morning, don't I? And I, I love that. The formal opening by a world-famous celebrity has been in the calendar for years. Well, the reason it's happening on the 20th of April is because it's the 175th anniversary of the Fastiniog Railway opening back in 1836. So it's a major day in our calendar. 
you see there's a, there's a photograph on the table here. We'll be unveiling this, uh, this plaque which has been made of Blyna Festiniog slate. Uh, and yesterday it was transported from Blyna Festiniog uh, down to Port Maddock um, by, by train. And uh, that's the plaque that we'll be having unveiled by, uh, by Peter Waterman uh, on the actual day. Down at Harbour Station, it's all hands on deck. There's still a lot to do. I'm busy trying to get ready for the, uh, the event at the weekend, so uh, got lots of other things to do as well. <laughs> Claire Britton is now commercial manager at Festinio Railway, and all because of her mother's pioneering spirit. My mother was uh, a volunteer back in the 1960s and 70s. She was very interested in the railway, and we used to get dragged along uh, when we were on holiday in Wales, and uh, I helped uh, from when I was about nine or ten, helping her to do little bits around the railway. And then I found that I was interested myself, and uh, I stayed, went to university in Bangor, and uh, here I am. Angela Harrington, Claire's mum, has been a trailblazer all her life. Well, yes, I was the first lady to be a fireman, and I was also the first lady to be a director. I've always been interested in trains, particularly steam engines, and um, I just like to be out in the fresh air and up in the hills. You can't beat it in the winter on a sunny day. It's not so good when it's pouring with rain and you've got cluttered up with oilskins and welly boots. As the only female member of the track gang, Angela visited Wales monthly. Lodgings were a damp and dingy cottage in the Welsh hills. The others used to sleep in bunks down the other end of the cottage, but I used to go in the kitchen because that was the warmest place. I could put some money in the meter and turn the oven on and open the door and keep warm that way. Several Monday mornings I've gone to work and gone up to the office on the bottom up the stairs when nobody was looking because I was so stiff. At 74, Angela Harrington is still busy helping out, and like many other volunteers, the railway has become a huge part of her life. Yes, I lost my husband nearly three years ago, and I felt that I would like a complete change in my life. It was time to do something different, so I bought a little cottage here, which I intended to use as a holiday home and come and spend quite a lot of time here. But every time I came... The more I came, the less I wanted to go back to Nottingham, so I've stayed. It is the steam that interests her, but also the railway is such a lovely big family thing that you, you get hooked for lots of reasons. I think it's not just the steam, it's the people that you meet, and it's running a railway, there's a buzz about it. From now on, passengers will be able to travel from Harbour Station in Porth Madog in two directions. On the Welsh Highland Bayer Garrett engines to Carnarvon and on the smaller engines of the Festiniog Railway to Tanabulch and Blaenau Festiniog. The workload has in effect doubled and with a formal opening about to happen, it's a busy time at Boston Lodge for Tony Williams and his team. When something like this comes along, it throws the schedule a little bit. There's uh, quite a lot to do, little things to finalise, things to check over. There's a lot of uh, jiggling and balancing, getting the right locomotive in the right place, getting the right crew in the right place. So it's just a bit of a logistical nightmare more than anything else. Uh, we'll be ready <laughs> at the time the train is signalled away by the guard, hopefully. <laughs> the day of the grand opening and local dignitaries, staff and volunteers are gathering to greet the celebrity guest. Peter Waterman is a die-hard train enthusiast. He owns several trains and runs a railway workshop in Crewe. He's built up a close relationship with the Welsh Highland project, so much so that he even bought his own Bayer Garrett engine. I started on the railway in 1962 in steam days. I was born next to a railway line in 1947, so I've never known anything but railway engines. And I've always said to people, you know, as I lay in my cot, it was the sound of those coal engines coming out the collieries that, that you know, that's what I grew up on, and, and I, it's never left me. Yes, it's absolutely me enough. He's a good railway man, yes. He's been in the business for over 50 years, apparently. For him to be here today, obviously, that's a very special occasion. The story of Peter Waterman is simply that he, he had never travelled on a narrow gauge train. I invited him along to come for a ride on the Festinial Railway. 
he agreed to do that and he came for the day. He uh, rode in, in a gravity slate train. Uh, he went on the footplate of a Festiniog engine. But then we took him on a Welsh Highland Railway Garrett locomotive, number 87, and uh, we gave him the shovel and he fired the engine. And um, he absolutely loved it. Nothing prepared me for the day that Paul put me on the Bay of Garrets. I mean, that was me. I was like a schoolboy. I mean, it was the most revolutionary. I mean, it, it, no matter how many steam engines I owned, I left, and I remember it was that inevitable thing I said to Paul, if I bought one of these, do you think I could run it here? And, and I remember it, and he said, yeah, yeah. And I said, are there any? And he said, yeah. And I didn't think he thought I was serious, but I got back to crew and I said, ring this guy at the Welsh Highlands named Paul, get hold of where the, we can get these engines in South Africa and get one back. And the guys at crew just still, still to this day said, when you actually told us to go to South Africa and buy one of these locos, we didn't really think you meant it. After 175 years, I'm sorry it's an Englishman pulling this plaque, but I have got a claim, my children are half Welsh. And I did once enter a Welsh song that I wrote into the Eurovision Song Competition. Not a lot of people know this, and it was called Lanfer Puth Wingeth Gogerth Rwando Go Slanty Silver Go 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 to a tune. I kid you not, it actually made the last eight. So I'm going to now open this because uh, there's a lot to do. I'm, I'm so proud of this, and I would like to say to all the guys and all the people that have done this, well done. It really is magnificent. Well done. After decades in the planning and 15 years in the building, Wales's latest railway is now open for business. Many have supported the venture, royalty, celebrities, and thousands of men and women who have given time and money to see the realization of a dream. For the architects of the project, the reality does not disappoint. To rebuild a Narragate Railway is, to me, a heaven-sent opportunity. And rebuilding the Welsh Highland Railway has caused me immense satisfaction. It seemed an impossible dream, and, well, impossible dreams are just challenges. I don't know if in the beginning we were actually convinced we could do the job, but we said, right, we're going to give this our best shot, and, and it's worked. It's come together, and it's been a wonderful success, and uh, I'm delighted. And I can look back over those 20 years and say, yeah, that was a great time building that railway. I'm going to be lost, but only for a short time, because I'll still be coming up here for volunteering. There'll still be things to do. You've always got something to do because it's a living, breathing thing. Putting it down is OK. Now we've got to run it 25 miles through Snowdonia. Doesn't look after itself. I think the work will be here when the rest of us are all going to be our maker. And when my days are finished, I want my ashes scattered along it somewhere. Huh. It's going to be strange. I'm a little bit here for now. 